lovelies, this is Simsfell and welcome to episode 1 of Niche Wizarding World Season 2. We have returned with the Spellbook Tribe Reborn. So, at the end of the previous season, I asked you lovelies whether or not you wanted this challenge to continue, and you guys voted yes, but with a few revisions to the rulebook that hopefully this challenge is a lot less impossible. I went ahead, had a look, and revised a few things, and we have returned to hopefully have fun trying to build a wizarding world a little bit more successfully than we did prior to this season. And as such, I was required to update the backstory of our lovely nichelings. This time we are starting off with 6 rather than 5 because of the inclusion of a very important class that we are going to be playing around with. As you can see, he's got Personat and Random Homes and some of you might already know what this class is, but I will speak more of it a little bit later on. And the story that I went ahead with is that the nichelings that we had beforehand, so Mastenaria and Telalon, Ilarion, and all the other nichelings that they started off with, basically were so passionate about establishing a magical society that their spirits couldn't move on to the afterlife, and they were reborn with new faces and new names in a new land that is hopefully more hospitable than the savannah they found themselves in last time in their last lives. And this time they've also brought along with them a sixth nicheling that I'm going to say was part of their band in season one, but while they were running away from the tyrannical society that they lived in, they kind of forgot that niche, not forgot, probably left him behind or he died or something tragic happened to him. But this time they made sure that he was reborn with them, they found his spirit and found nicheling bodies to be born into. And there we go, here they are. Now with the rules that I have gone ahead and revised, I don't remember how many we had previously, I think we had 10, but this time around we have 13. So before I talk about anything else, I'm going to go ahead and read out the ancient spell book so we can see what's going on and you guys can be updated on how we're going to be playing this series. So let's get started, shall we? Here is the ancient spell book. Begin with six nichelings, a male and female aged 10 days, and four other males with ages randomized from 1 to 39. Custom ages are as follows, one day for babies, one day for children, eight days for teens, and 30 days for adults. The sixth nicheling must be a male with double personnel. This will be our healing wizard. They will not have any breeding restrictions, and will be born with the title of healer. Any personated nicheling born into the tribe will follow suit. Then we must establish the wizarding circle. To do this, roll a dice to see whether the circle has a grand wizard or witch. This will be our leader. Now we can begin using our magical ability. Nichelings can only breed once they have been touched by magic, i.e. have the mutations set. Mutations can be set in two ways, by becoming a wizard or witch, or by doing a favor for one, i.e. licking wounds, taking off leeches, and such. Nichelings doing favors will receive one mutation per favor, which will be randomized. To become a witch or wizard, a Nicheling must be apprenticed to a master in the wizarding circle. Only teens can be taken as apprentices. Once apprentices age up to an adult, they graduate to the title of wizard or witch and use their magical powers to manifest their mutations. These spells do not have to be randomized and can be chosen by the Nichelings casting them. If an apprentice's master dies before they're able to graduate, then they will age up into a hedge wizard or witch. As a result, they will only be able to cast one mutation and will have to gain a favor for the second one. Nichelings can only gain the title of master once they're 20 days old, unless they've been trained by the grand wizard or witch themselves. In this case, they age up to the title of master. Successors are chosen by the leaders on the last day of their lives from between the circle masters. When a new master takes on leadership, roll to see whether they remain on the island or go to a new one. A 1 or a 4 on the dice means they will leave. Any other number means they will stay. 
Now, if I have missed out on anything, guys, then please let me know down in the comments below so that I can go ahead and update all of that for you lovelies or add something new, maybe make some more changes. But I think I did a pretty good job of revising everything that we talked about in the previous series. And now that all of that is done with, I can go ahead and introduce my nichelings to you lovelies. You might already recognize some of them, especially the one female we have in the middle. So the female we have in the middle is Master Bequara, and she is the reincarnation of Master Naria. Alongside her, we have not really her mate, but her lover, I guess you could say, Master Rusale, who is the reincarnation of Master Telalorn. Now, the other niche things, you guys can let me know who you think is who from the previous season. We do have one extra member, but of the three other niche things alongside the two masters, you guys can let me know who you think reincarnated as who. I think it'll be interesting to see your theories on all of that. But behind them, kind of protected over here, is Gila Ilfrak. And he, as you guys heard, is the new class of niche thing that we have, Gila and he will not have the same restrictions that everyone else has. So pretty much anyone in the tribe born with Personat is immediately going to be given the title of healer, and it's we're saying that they're born a magician, or not a magician, geez, they're born a mage, a witch or a wizard, and they don't need to go through the training that everyone else has to. So we need to give him his gemstones. I'm thinking the healers will have the light green gemstones because that just makes sense to me, so there we go. And also, even though Master Bequara and Master Ruzel uh, lovers in a sense. This society doesn't have the same concept of mates for life as maybe some of our other challenges do. So pretty much any nicheling can take any nicheling for a mate as long as the other nicheling or both nichelings are touched by magic. Which we also had a little bit of a change to from the previous season. Previously we used to randomize all the spells that we used to cast so the mutations were all randomized. However from now on if you train to become a, a wizard or a witch and you graduate, basically, you go ahead, cast your spells, but we actually get to choose what genetics we put into the mutation menu. If you age up into a hedge witch or a hedge wizard, you only get to choose one. And the other one is randomized because from now on, we're only randomizing the favors. So if, for example, Frenel does a favor for Master Bequara and she can grant him a spell, that spell will have to be randomized. Whereas if Bequara was performing a spell on herself, then that would be chosen by us. So that is how we are going to be playing it. And since we have said hello to Bequara, to Ruzale and Ilfrak, we should probably meet the other three because you guys are going to have to tell me who reincarnated as who. So the youngest we have, I think, is Aliantla. Actually, Ilfrak is younger, but we have Aliantla over here. We have Frenald and we have Taztel. And the ages are randomized to give a little bit more of a challenge. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly go through the ages. Now both Bequara and Ruzale aged up, oh, I mean, uh, 10 days old. And that's so that we can actually go ahead and make sure we have an opportunity to have as many children as possible. Huh. And this time I've actually started out with um, 10 nesting material. I think we got some extra from clearing away the grasses. 60 food because I thought it just makes a whole lot more sense to go ahead and start off with 10 food per nicheling and six nichelings of course and I don't feel as though we should be confined to a savannah island I haven't specified what sort of biome you start off in because I feel like depending on the challenge you guys want to set for yourselves you can choose whatever biome you want I'm starting off with a grass mingle just because I realized that I in no way can survive in a savannah but, but at the same time I do want to go ahead and have an element of that and the grass mingle has patches of savannah as well as the normal grass which is hopefully going to make things a lot easier. So this is the island that we are on and we have bits of swamp as well. So it's a nice variety pretty much to go ahead, explore a little bit, see how our nichelings fare in these different sort of biomes. So we have that going on. And anything else? Did I have anything else to tell you lovelies? I don't know. But you guys can leave me some magical names in the comments below and I will compile a separate list for this series specifically to choose names from. Now you guys, by the way, I've, you know, already named the nichelings that we're starting off with, should probably know the type of names I want. And also from the previous season, so I would prefer something that kind of sounds magical, a little bit 
crazy. That'd be pretty cool, pronounceable, preferably, but I think it'll be pretty fun to see what we come up with. Now we need to have a more in-depth look at some of these nichelings, um, genetics and stuff. But before we do that, actually, um, I need to go ahead and roll the dice, don't I? We have to roll the dice for some important stuff, guys. Otherwise, we have an established wizarding circle. Okay, so I'm going to say that if it's an odd number, we'll have a grand witch. If it's an even number, we'll have a grand wizard. So let's roll the dice and see what we get. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, we got an even number. That means we have a grand wizard? Yeah, I think we have a grand wizard. Let me just pick up my dice from the floor. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, there we go. Got it. So we got a six, which is an even number, means we have a grand wizard. I was gonna say grandmaster. No, it's grand wizard Ruzale. And this is funny because I'm pretty sure Telalon was the grand wizard in the previous life, so that's interesting. So we have a grand wizard Ruzale, and now we have a wizarding circle. And he needs to go ahead and get his dark pink gemstones. So I'll do that for him. Wonderful. And I need to give Master Bequara her gemstones as well. I think I'm gonna give her pink. All the masters will be given pink. Hmm. This is tough. This is tough. Very tough. Okay. I'm also gonna have to remember to start keeping a list, kind of like how I do for the Warrior Cat series. I'm gonna have to remember to keep a list of the different masters and apprentices so that I'm able to do things a lot easier and figure out who's who. I'm not gonna be putting the um, little apprentice scroll on the screen anymore. I'm just gonna keep a personal list for myself and you guys will just have to keep track with me. Okay, so we have, I think I'm gonna have the masters have pink gemstones. Um, the grand wizards have the dark pink gemstones. Apprentices are probably gonna have, not apprentices, witches and wizards I think are gonna have brown gemstones should they brown gemstones maybe yeah i think i'll give them brown gemstones and then i'll give light brown gemstones to the apprentices regardless of who they're apprenticed to hmm should i do that i think that's what i should do but now i kind of want to give hold on a second hold on a second everyone i feel like maybe the healers should have orange hmm that's gonna get too confusing isn't it is it? How close is the orange to the light brown? Mm, not that close. Not that close. Hmm. But I kind of like the... Uh, I kind of like the green too, guys. Let me know. Should we have green or orange? I feel like it's going to get pretty complicated if I keep going this way. Hmm. You know what? I'll keep green. I'll keep green. Yeah, green looks nice, and it's healing magic. That makes a lot of sense, but, hmm. Okay, hold on a second. How is, oh, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, okay. This is what we're gonna do, guys. This is what we're gonna do. So, we are gonna make sure that the wizards and the witches have the orange, and I'm just using um, Fresnel to show you guys what I mean, but we'll have the witches and wizards have orange gemstone, their apprentices will have the light brown, right? But if you're a hedge witch or a hedge wizard, you're gonna have the dark brown. There we go, hedge witches and hedge wizards have dark brown gemstones. If you are touched by magic, you are going to have, ah, oh, those older colors we have, if you're touched by magic, you can have a orange gemstone in the middle to show that you were touched by magic. I think that's how we'll do it. Mm -hmm. But if you're not altogether, then you'll just have yellow gemstones. There we go. Hopefully someone notes that down because I'm probably going to forget. <laughs> that is how we are going to work it from now on. So leaders have um, dark pink gemstones. Masters have light pink gemstones. Witches and wizards have orange gemstones. Their apprentices have light brown gemstones, hedge witches and wizards have dark brown gemstones, 
and normal nichelings or the non-magical have yellow gemstones. There we go, guys. And the next most important thing that we actually have to do after establishing the wizarding circle, which is something we do every time we have a new leader, is to decide whether or not they're going to stay on this island. Are they satisfied, basically? Or do they want to leave? And this, if they decide to leave, that's only going to be pretty much the directive for the entire tribe until they die. And if the next master comes into play, then they will again roll the dice to see whether they want to stay or leave. Okay, so Rosale needs to decide what he wants to do. Now, I think I said in the rule book that if it's a 1 or a 4, it means he's going to leave. Any other number means he's going to stay. So let's roll the dice and see what he gets. He got a 5, which means he wants to stay on this island. Okay, coolio. So he's going to stay. Now, the pregnancies do run for 3 days. But before we do any of that, I actually need to think about the mutations. They need to cast spells. So Healer Ilfrak, he's going to cast a spell straight off the bat. Now he's got double personnel and of all the nichelings, I only specified certain genes. So for example, I only specified the personnel for Ilfrak, the double personnel. Everything else is randomized. Um, Master Bayquara, I specified just to immunities. Nothing else was chosen. Same goes for Ruzale. I only specified the immunities to make sure they match. Um, and everyone else was pretty much randomized. So let's quickly have a look at what we're going with. I mean, the other two, Taztel, Frenald, I mean, the other three, Alien Law, don't really matter. <laughs> ah, these three, though. The Masters of the Grand Wizard, a little master over here, and Gila, they need to have their genes kind of chosen because they have to cast spells. So he has blind eyes, which is not cool. He's got webbed hind legs, which I want to change. Um, and that's about, I'm thinking uh, he needs a better paw. He needs webbed, not webbed hind legs. So, hmm. I don't think blind eyes are going to pose that much of a problem. So the first spell he's going to cast is the normal hind legs. Um, and the second spell is going to be the runner's leg. Because that's seriously not helping him out. Actually, actually... Darn it, I didn't think about that. I did not think about that. He actually can do good in the water because he can open up these shells, I think. I actually don't know how much you need to open up the shells. We're gonna try though, because he has water body, so he can spend a lot of time in the waters. And nobody's sick, luckily, so he doesn't have to stay around to heal anyone. Now, Master Bayquara, she does well on land. And yeah, she, she doesn't have water breathing ability. So, if that is the case, she needs better, like, paws, and that's about it. Hmm, better eyesight, I guess. I'll give her, oh jeez, no, better paws and better eyesight. So let's go ahead, run his leg, and I'll give her good eyesight, because that is very important. And then we have Grand Wizard Ruzale, his genetics, he's got platypus beak and bird beak. So only two new things go in the water. Taztel and Ilfrak. Okay. Well, Grand Wizard Ruzale, his arms are great. Legs. Legs. We need to fix those legs. Actually, no, we don't. Because he, if he's got platypus beak, he can actually go in the water. Oh, yeah. Mm. He can go in the water, but he can't breathe underwater, so that's a different thing altogether. We'll give him normal legs then. Mm. And... There's nothing else really that I want to change with him. So we'll give him normal legs. Oh jeez, this is not what I want. He's going to cast a spell. He's going to get normal hind legs. And then, since I can't decide what I want with him, I'm going to randomize. But I can say no to something if I don't like it. Because with the magic magical nichelings, I can actually choose what genetics they have. Because in the previous season, you guys did say that if everything's randomized then there's no point because we won't get anywhere if we want to do something with a nichling, if we want to accomplish a certain task they can do or a certain way nichelings look. We won't be able to do that if it's constantly randomized. Which is why I decided to go ahead and actually implement the rule which determines when you randomize and when you don't. But let's go and do this. So I get to choose right now. So I'll, if I want to say no to something, I'll do that. It's just because I can't decide for now. 
Uh, there's nothing immediate that I want to give Ruzel, whereas normally, if for example, a favor was done and then an Ishling cast a spell, I would have to accept whatever randomization result came up, regardless of whether it's a good gene or a bad gene. So okay, I think there's 14 across. We got 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's 8 down. Okay, 8 down. 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Ooh, black fur. Okay, so we're gonna give him black fur. Also, uh, cosmetics is something that I will only be putting in, most probably, um, if it's randomized in. Whereas if we get to choose, I most probably will only choose stuff that's physical and not cosmetics because I don't like messing with cosmetics. So black fur, I guess, is something that he wants. Interesting. I guess that's something he cost himself. Fascinating, fascinating. Okay, since we've got all the genes and stuff done, we can actually get Bequara to mate with Ruzil. So we'll get her to do that. I mean, get him to do that. Wonderful. She's now expectant. And she's going to be expectant for three days before she has her first child. And as well as this, since Aliantla is actually eight days old, he still has time to be taken on as an apprentice. So who is he going to be taken on by? I think he's going to be taken on by Grand Wizard Ruzil. So we will actually give Iliantla the, is this the light brown? I think this is. We'll give him the light brown gemstone. I think that's light brown. I'm pretty sure it is. Wait, hold on a second. One, two, three, four. Yes, it is. Okay, we'll give him the light brown gemstones and I'm gonna have to record that little partnership up there, which shouldn't be too hard to remember because they're both golden nichelings, so that's pretty cool. But that's what we have going on. And the cool part about randomizing the ages of the four other males that are in the tribe is that it kind of affects how many wizards we have, like who, for example, Frenald and Tastel, they're too old to be magical. So unless they do some favors, they won't have chances of breeding ever, which is really sad. But okay, Hela Ilfrak. You don't have anything you need to do. Bequara, you can collect stuff. So you're gonna be heading onto land, most probably. Um, we will have Reynold probably joining. Oh, he can fish. Yes, please. Reynold's gonna grab some fish. Taztel can breathe underwater. But he can collect stuff, which is not gonna be useful. So he's gonna come this way. Clear away some grass, help out with that. Ilfrak can... I don't know if he... Can he open shells? He can't fish, that's for sure, but he can breathe underwater. So I'm gonna see if we can open up some of these seashells and we'll see what happens with that. But okay, let's turn the day, shall we? And by the way, in case I haven't said it already, the nichelings now live for a total of 40 days. So I didn't really change the ages of the children, but I extended the ages of the adults. Hopefully they'll be able to get two apprentices on average each. Um, in their lifetimes before passing away, kind of like how we have the warrior cats, and hopefully that'll help out with the amount of wizards we have. Huh. Whereas in the previous season, the ages were too restrictive, and we couldn't get anyone to train anyone else in time enough to have more than like one nichling, like one magical nichling at a time. So hopefully that fixes a lot of things. But okay, let's turn the day, shall we? Already, I am less stressed because of the island we are on. But okay, yes. Ilfrak can grab, oh geez, where's Arena? He can grab some seashells. So he's gonna jump, oh, so many seashells! Oh my goodness, I love this. He like Ilfrak, and I like imagining that when he uses his spells, he's able to bind like nature and water, leaves, air, all of those sort of things into whatever healing magic he gives off to the nichelings. Like he's able to combine that with his voice and stuff. Ooh, I feel like that's a really cool idea with the healers. So he's doing his own little thing. And healers never need to be apprenticed to anyone. They just are born healers, you know. They know how the magic is. They know the ma they have the magical touch. So we have that going on. Eliantla, you're an apprentice, my boy. You need your title. Apprentice. There we go. Apprentice Eliantla. Okay, and let's get little apprentice over here. He can attack just a little bit. He's really useless. <laughs> Alien, well, you're so useless. He's gonna gather grass for us. He can't do much else. Okay, Ruzel, he can grab. Oh, you know what? He would be good along the coast here. Oh, yep, he can grab some shells, but he would be good along the coast. There's so many shells here. I love this place um, because he's got the platypus beak. So I think he would like spending a lot of his time on the coast. 
We'll get Fennold over here. He can grab fish, not Razorina, but fish. I think he's gonna keep close to um, Gila Ilfrak. The healers can also grant favors because they count as magical nichelings. Thing is gonna come here, possibly try and light up the way, step away from the tree. Look at how many shells we have. There's so many shells, guys. Look at that. Ilfrak's gonna have so much fun. But anyways, guys, with that said and done, I'm gonna leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.